Even some of the biggest sellers can fall victim to lesser known pitfalls of running an Etsy shop. And I'm not just talking about the things that we all know about from Etsy seller handbook. I'm talking about weird rules and bad practices that most Etsy sellers are totally unaware of and that can really hurt your shop in the long run. For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And even if you've been selling on Etsy for a while, there are some Etsy rules and best practices that aren't as clear as others. And while not all of them will get you in trouble as a seller, some can hurt your growth. So today I'm covering seven Etsy mistakes that you may not even be aware that you're making, even if you're an experienced seller. Before we dive into the details, I just wanna take a moment to give a quick shout out to this week's featured shop. Hey you, thanks so much for your love and support. For those watching, if you'd like to submit for your own shout out, just tag Handmade Alphas in a photo or screenshot of yourself watching this video, either in your Instagram feed or Instagram stories. Mistake number one, reusing the listing of a previous bestseller. The basis of this mistake is pretty simple. In short, listings that sell over and over again generate what is known as a listing quality score on Etsy. And listings with high listing quality scores are more likely to be shown to more shoppers. You can learn more about how this works in my free Etsy SEO toolbox up here. The mistake comes when a shop sells out of a best-selling item, then swaps out the photos and a few essential product details for a totally different item in order to keep the listing's existing history and quality score. But there's a few issues with this tactic. First of all, Etsy doesn't like it because it's dishonest. When Etsy ranks a product high in search, they're ranking it based on what they already know about this item. Things like past sales and past reviews of the item all contribute to the overall quality score. And that quality score is one of the primary factors that determines where you rank. So by putting a totally different item in the place of a bestseller, you're basically creating a bit of an imposter listing in an effort to ride the coattails of your previous listing success. Not to mention, if anyone has favorited the original item and you swap it out for something else, your customer will see something totally different in their favorites. And no one likes to feel like they've been a victim of bait and switch, even if it wasn't your intention. So when listing something new, always start with a fresh listing or copy an existing listing if you want to reuse some of your essential details. None of the quality score or listing history will carry over, but it's a great way to save time if you want to list multiple similar items. Mistake number two, repeating words in your tags. This is one of the mistakes that won't get you in trouble, but it's a huge waste of an opportunity. This is because Etsy reads every word in your tags in every possible comment combination. For example, if you're selling this gray tabby cat mom mug, you might be tempted to write your tags like this. Tabby mug, cat mug, cat mom mug, tabby mom mug, kitty mug, kitten mug, and so on. But since Etsy is already going to broad match you for the word mug, which basically means that they will read those words in every combination, you've just wasted 15 characters that could have been used for different keywords. Instead, it would be better to enter your tags as gray tabby and cat mom mug. With these two tags, you'll exact match for the phrase gray tabby and cat mom mug, which is the strongest form of keyword matching, but you'll broad match for gray cat cat, gray tabby cat, tabby mug, gray cat mug, tabby mom mug, and so on. Then you'll still have 11 tag spaces to experiment with other great keywords. Mistake number three, sending unsolicited messages to your customers. On Etsy, any communication with your customer must be tied to a recent transaction, which means that messaging past customers about new products, coupons, or upcoming sales is actually against Etsy's rules. However, transactional messages or messages related to a recent purchase in your shop are totally allowed and can actually help to increase your rate of five-star reviews, thus increasing your listing quality scores and your search ranking. If you need a little help with this, be sure to grab the free Etsy SEO toolbox that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, because it actually has a set of copy and paste transactional messages that you can send to your customers after making a sale in order to encourage positive reviews. Mistake number four, renewing all of your listings to get a boost in search. I know my long-term subscribers are sick of hearing me talk about this one, but it never fails. At least once a month, I get an email from one of you guys asking, 
talking about it. While it's true that Etsy gives a boost in search to new listings, this boost has a purpose. Remember earlier when I said that listings rank in search or are shown to more people based on what is known as a listing quality score? When a new listing is added to your shop, it obviously won't have a quality score yet because it's brand new. So in order to help you build your initial quality score, Etsy gives each new listing a slight boost. During this time, they observe how shoppers interact with that listing in order to determine where to place that listing in search. And this can take up to 60 to even 90 days. So what happens when you repeatedly pay the 20 cents to renew all of your listings at once? It makes those listings look not very good, especially if no one interacts with them during the boost. And over time, these listings will likely begin to fall further and further down in search. Mistake number five, using all 140 characters in your Etsy titles. Okay, this one isn't really a mistake, but it's a senseless piece of viral advice that literally goes against Etsy's best practices. And I know someone here on YouTube has to be teaching something about it because you guys ask me about it almost every single week. Yes, using a variety of keywords is good, but there's no magical benefit of using every single character space for your Etsy titles, nor does Etsy tell us to do this. I'd like to think that this was a good piece of advice that was simply taken out of context, but based on some of the questions that I get, it seems like sellers have been told that there's a magical character counting robot that hands out special search ranking awards to anyone who can get exactly 140 characters in their titles. When it comes to writing your titles, here's what Etsy says. Focus on writing short, clear, descriptive titles that make it easy for shoppers who are scanning a busy search results page to see what you're selling. When it comes to the Etsy algorithm, it doesn't care if your titles are short or long. The algorithm is going to look at every keyword that you put into your titles. But Etsy tells us that short and clear titles help to eliminate buyer confusion and can result in customers following through with their purchases. So should you do what Etsy says and write short titles? Or should you write longer titles that allow for a larger variety of keywords? My advice is to try both. Both work, both can make you sales. And testing them in your own shop is the only way to know which will work for your specific target customers. But please, don't sit around trying to think up the perfect amount of keywords in order to fill exactly 140 characters. Not only is that a huge waste of brain power, it just looks silly. <laughs> Mistake number six, listing every single day. Again, not something that is gonna get you banned, but it's a common tactic that I see shared by these cool bro Lambo get rich quick dudes. Basically, there is a tip going around stating that Etsy is more likely to give you better visibility if you can list an item a day. And again, this is nothing more than a general misinterpretation of Etsy's best practices. Etsy tells us that they like to see active shops, active not shoving 600 random POD mugs into a storefront active, just active. This could be updating your about section, improving some old listings, or even responding to some of your past reviews. And yes, you could argue that the rules of probability might be at play here. The more listings you have, the more likely it is that you'll eventually find some winning products. But as someone who has seen sellers who literally spend more on listing fees than they make, trying to maintain the strategy is not a profitable or sustainable way to run your business. Especially if you're selling in a low margin niche like print on demand and digital. There's no special boost for sellers who list daily. If you've got items to list, then list them. But if you aren't making money on the listings that you already have, there's likely a bigger issue at play than simply not having enough items. Our last Etsy mistake is one that can get you in a lot of trouble, with fines in the US up to $16,000 for violating this law. And it's one that I see sellers make all the time. Before I share this final fatal mistake, I just wanna quickly mention that my Etsy coaching program will be opening for registration on June 14th. The Handmade Alpha Academy is a nine module self-paced training program that teaches sellers how to build, market, and grow dominant brands on Etsy. Unlike most quick Etsy crash courses, the Handmade Alpha Academy follows a step-by-step -step curriculum based on consumer psychology, neuromarketing, and real Etsy shopper behavior. No matter how big or small your business is, HAA is designed to help you grow by teaching you how to define your target audience, how to optimize your shop and marketing to attract that ideal customer, and how to build a perpetual traffic funnel that will allow you to drive customers to your shop, even during the slow seasons. And this season, we're offering major incentives to new students, including one year of E-Rank Pro, annual access to our Alpha Holiday Bootcamp, and the Product Photography Essentials Workshop by Christina Nicole. If this sounds like something that you may be interested in checking out, be sure to visit the link up here or go to joinhaa.com to check out our success stories and the class curriculum. Okay, back to business. Mistake number seven, 
adding your Etsy customers to your email list without their permission. In the US, it is illegal to add a person to an email list without their consent. And the FTC imposes penalties of up to $16,000 per email sent. So if you've got an email list of say 50 people, that's $800,000. Not to mention, no matter where you live, you are obligated to comply with the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, which has fines of up to 20 million euros. So is email list marketing allowed at all on Etsy? Yes, but you need to understand the laws and your customers must be able to opt in to your email list by entering their own email willingly. These are all things that we actually cover in my Etsy coaching program, but if you wanna do the research yourself, just just be sure to look up the laws related to the FTC email guidelines, the Can Spam Act, and the European Union's GDPR for email list marketing. Bottom line, don't add your customers' email addresses to your business's email list without their written consent. Or create an email signup form where they can sign up on their own in order to receive future marketing from you. Overall, success on Etsy means staying up to date on the most recent best practices and strategies in order to avoid common pitfalls that could hurt your growth. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.